Before we get started with the show, I want to say this first. So I'm closing on a property. I was signing the documents. I had to go and uh, sign some other documents with the city. And then the titling company is going to come along. And then we're going to go ahead and close out within a week or whatever, right? And I'm working on all of this stuff and I'm taking care of business. And I actually went and visited the property yesterday and I was so excited. And the reason I was so excited is because I had a vision. I had a vision for what I wanted to do at the property, right? And a lot of times when you get these properties, and I wish I could just put this in you guys. I genuinely do. Like, I wish I can give it to you. I wish I could show you what it feels like to ultimately be successful in the way that you want to be successful. Not based off of what I do or what I want to do in order to be successful, but based off of what you would want in your life. And I want you to document what you want in your life, but I also want you to hearken back to your childhood. And the reason why I want you to harken back to your childhood is because we did some things in our childhood that ultimately gave us the keys to success, but we absolutely forgot it and we left it behind once we stopped dreaming. And P. Shank, I appreciate you. I'm definitely going to be reading that Super Chat Annie's Cash App shortly. But we left behind a piece of our childhood, the part that we were supposed to leverage, leapfrog off of, and then ultimately get successful as a result of it. And we forgot every single lesson that we were ever taught. But I didn't because I still have that inner child within me. And that inner child within me is uh, it's a desire. It's a, it's, it's a dream. It's, it's the cars that I want to drive. It's the places that I want to travel to. And a lot of y'all have resigned yourselves to ultimately just be in survival mode. You don't even have anything to look forward to except for getting off of work, smoking some trees, and then possibly escaping from your reality by deep diving into a video game. I'm going to be honest with you. Like, I see this, and I'm, I'm very much aware of what's happening because I talk to so many people on a regular basis. And it's unfortunate. It really is unfortunate that we are living in a space and a, and a general sentiment. The more technology that we get, the more money we make and all of this the more our dreams die. And the reason that that is, and again, it's because we fundamentally forgot what it means to be human. And I think that you are at your most human when you are a child because children are beautiful in that they're not tainted by the world. The world didn't have a chance to kick your butt yet. Women didn't have a chance to break your heart. Guys didn't have a chance to make you for the streets. You wasn't, you wasn't, uh, smitten by the idea of aligning yourself with people based off of color or skin or diversity, equity, and inclusion. And you were just innocent. And your goal was to have a lot of fun. And then you started to craft what you wanted your life to be like based off of what you then discovered was beautiful to you. And one of the things that was beautiful to me, and I had this poster on my wall. I know a lot of y'all back in the day, y'all had to word up posters and you had immature and, and, and Marquise Houston and, you know, whoever the latest Disney stars or who was in those magazines and stuff. I know I'm taking y'all back a little bit, but roll with me. And you had these things on your wall, but I had a Lamborghini Countach and then I had a Diablo on my wall. I did. And when I say harken back to some of the lessons that we had that ultimately shaped what we thought was success or the lessons that school couldn't even teach us. Remember when we played Monopoly? I still play Monopoly when I get with my family today. And my brother, you know, he's one of the biggest cheaters in Monopoly that I've ever seen in my life. But he ultimately lives by this creed that was taught to him by our uncle. And it says, yo, if you're not trying to cheat, you're not trying to win. <laughs> so he just be pilfering a 500 here and there and he always trying to be the banker. We've just completely removed him from being the banker. But there are some fundamental lessons similar to the rich dad, poor dad, similar to, to the books and everything like that. And there's some fundamental lessons that came along with the things that we've learned in our childhood. And one of those things was the game of Monopoly. Right. And it's a real game. It is a real life scenario. That exact same method for what success looks like is documented in the game of Monopoly. And the goal is to acquire as many properties as possible. And in that game, no matter how many times we play it, and no matter who we play it with, P. 
People that have a certain mentality do the same thing every time. People that are generally successful and understand assets are usually the ones that win the game because they are willing to trade in the money for the assets. And then the people that are willing to get the money, they count the money and they all excited and they use it like it's real money. And they be looking at it like it's real money and they be counting, yeah, 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 I'm winning. And you just be quiet and you you have to learn some other things like learning how to negotiate and trade and stuff like that. And one of the things that make it difficult is that you then have other people like, no, don't give it to them. Don't give them that property. But I'm making you an offer that you can't refuse. And I love railroads and I prefer to have the first and the second part of the board because they're easier to build quicker. And then ultimately I have to trade for greater properties and then eventually you move over to park place and one of the biggest mistakes in monopoly that people make is that they covet park place and boardwalk they can't wait to buy park pace park place and boardwalk and they can't even develop it they can't even put any houses on it because they spend an all of their time every single time they come around that first corner and then that second corner which is the easiest to develop because it's only fifty dollars per house right and then eventually you can get up to the hotel so you can develop it faster. And so you siphon it off money from everybody, which then prevents them from being able to build up Park Place, Boardwalk, and the green properties. And then you got the red and the yellow down there. But I'd rather have the orange, the blue, Baltic Ave, all of those properties. I want the orange, the baby blues. I want the purples. I want all of that, right? And so me deep diving into that and... and, and really understanding what that game meant to me translated into what it is that I'm dealing with and what I'm doing today. And so the same way that I deal with these people and I've actually, you know, gave the bag chasers uh, a little bit of insight into this, into this property that I'm finishing now, the way that I acquired the property was it was a woman going through a divorce. She ultimately won the property. She won a bunch of land and a bunch of properties. And so during the pandemic, when everybody was overpaying for houses because money was cheap, I pulled back. I didn't spend no money on houses, and I spent all of my time mining out, surfing for, and waiting for the opportunities that presented it to me, which ultimately one of them was the land that I'm building on now. And so she won the property and a divorce settlement, and then she got a little boyfriend, and I asked the real estate agent that ultimately contacted me because, you know, I got friends that ultimately reach out to me, and they say, Anton, if you got an all-cash deal— we can do this at the discounted rate. But she was willing to sell it so cheap because she just wanted the cash from it and she didn't see the value in the property. Now we develop in the property. The property is turning into a half a million dollar property when we only put about 300,000, maybe a little less than 300,000 into it. And so you already got an asset and we financed it ourselves because we the bank and we put all our own money up. So we own a half a million dollar asset that will ultimately get rent from every single month and it only cost us a little less than $300,000 to develop. But she was so excited to get that check that we wrote her. And it was such a small check in the grand scheme of things. It was such a small check in a phenomenal neighborhood, in a great suburb. It's in West Bloomfield, Michigan. I don't know if you guys know about West Bloomfield, Michigan, but it's in Oakland County, one of the richest counties inside of Michigan. And she didn't see the potential in it. And it was overgrown weeds and you know, I wind up ex excavating the property and developing and everything. And we going through the drywall and we picked out the cabinets and stuff later. And then today or yesterday, I drove by a property in Southfield. Um, and it's a phenomenal property. And we getting that for a song and we paying cash for it because a bunch of people didn't have the money to be able to do it. And the guy is so excited to give me to take my check. But I'm even more excited to actually buy the property. I'm more excited to buy the property. And when I went down the street, it was different. And this is one of the reasons why I tell my bag chasers and my Patreon members, you guys need to tap into the Patreon. Uh, you got to understand the place that you invest in, right? And so I went down the street and it's completely different than what it shows on Google Maps because when I drove down the street, they building half a million dollar homes all through it. And so I'm just looking at it like, oh man, I see the potential. I see what's going on over here. That house recently sold for half a million. That house sold for 450. That house is listed for four, uh, for 525. And so I'm looking at the potential and I'm like, man, I can't wait to throw a whole bunch of money at this thing. And so the point that I'm making to you is that there's three levels. The first level is people that are just surviving. If you are just surviving, that is you trading in your time for money. 
And then when you get a little bit of extra money, all you do is go and trick it off. You go and buy some trees. You go buy a PlayStation. But let me tell you something. None of those things add value into your life as far as assets to make your life easier or to allow for you to ultimately achieve that dream that you had when you were a child. And then the second level is people that feel comfortable enough to be able to get a job and they just trading in their time for money in order to continue to do it all over again the next day. And then they sold you on the idea that you are middle class so that you can continue to be a slave to a system that ultimately make the people that are in the third category super rich. And it's not a secret. It's monopoly. You trade in your money for assets. That's it. And you being able to identify the assets is the caveat, that's the context, that's what you got to do your research on. You got to understand what means the most to you, uh, what you're most excited about as far as what you want to want to throw your money into so you don't feel like you're just wasting your time or it takes too long in order for you to get that return on your investment back. Man, let me tell you something, bro. It's only three classes of people. It's survivors, it's people that's been tricked into being the middle class, and it's people that are willing to be successful that's willing to trade in their money for assets. That's it. That is it. It is no more to it. Assets, assets, assets. I do not care about cash. It is not even worth the paper that is printed on. It has no value to me except for to make sure that we can trade for goods and services so that we're not killing ourselves. That's the only thing that it means. Money is just a tool. I don't even care about inflation. I don't care about any of that stuff. You know why? Because I know that no matter what, Whatever it is that I buy from an asset perspective always beats the rate of inflation. So regardless of whether $100 is $100 or a dollar is $100 based off of what you were looking at back in the day or $100 then become $1,000 10 years from now, I'm always going to be ahead and I'm always going to be rich because I understand that the money is not worth anything, but the assets is what you, what you control that ultimately give you the power to do what you do on a regular basis. I want everything. And then eventually I'm going to come and get Boardwalk and Park Place too. When you get that big check, when you get that bonus, when you making that extra money and you want to go and trick it off on a girl in order to take her out to eat so that she can like you, think twice. Think twice. And ask yourself, what is it that I really wanted when I was a child and how long is it going to take me to get it if I decide that I wanted to invest in myself and invest in assets that ultimately is going to translate into me living the life that I really want to? Don't go your whole life and just die being, ex being unexceptional and not living out your dreams. If you live your, your life on this earth and you live to be 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years old and all you did was accept what somebody gave to you or beg somebody else for your place in society, but you never blazed the path and you never lived your dreams, I don't care how small or how big you think your dreams are, you don't even have to tell me or anybody what your dreams are. I'm telling you that it's not a life worth living. It's not worth it. I'm leaving it all on the flow. It's all on the flow. When I leave this earth, they gonna say that that dude lived like, a, I'm a rock star. I am a modern day, social media having, real estate owning, Bad chasing, asset having, Patreon member running, traveling monster, married, phenomenal kid, Rolex wearing, Porsche driving, sex getting, Christian loving God, rock star. That's what my life is. And I won't accept anything less than that. I won't accept anything less than that. I won't accept anything unless it's got good energy around me. You got to meet an expectation and even in order to even kick it with me. You're going to have to pay for my time in order for me to even be able to give you the game that I've learned over a period of time. I'm not accepting anything less than greatness. And it starts with me. It starts with what it is that I do on a regular basis. I don't even care about what's going on all on the Internet. The only thing that I'm focused on is building up me and my people, putting my guys on. Giving them the game, making sure Q was popping, Randy popping, Slimmy up next, Quentin, what you got going on, big dog, Mika, what's happening over there? I'm trying to figure out where all of my people at so I can put them on and bring them along with me so that we can run it up. 2K, you the funniest dude on the planet. Have you noticed that I don't try to I don't try to snuff out anybody's talent, but I embrace them? 
when you see somebody else, 2K, in my opinion, is one of the funniest dudes on the internet. I'm trying to figure out how we can build him up and figure out how he can get more visibility because the world needs to hear his talent. He's more talented than some of your favorite comedians, bar none. I believe so much in 2K. I believe so much in 2K. I believe that he's funnier than the biggest comedians and he has a brighter future. I'm trying to figure out where I can get him in a room, what type of money we need to be. And I don't need to, I don't have no interest. I don't have nothing that I'm getting from him. Ain't no contracts that I got with him. None of that. I just love my people. And so I believe in seeing through the dreams and making people great and making this earth better as a result of we being here. And we are stronger together than we are apart. And the minute that we stop trying to hate on each other and trying to hold somebody down or try to prevent them from being great instead of learning from the lessons and then building each other up because him being great is me being great. And I don't have to get nothing from it. I get from it me being in the same circle as him because when he get to a certain height, he gonna be like, yo, Tyne. Yo, Tyne is the greatest podcaster. Tyne got the best morning show on the face of this earth. Let me build him up. You don't have to have equity in what somebody else is doing. You see what I'm saying? I don't have to own nobody else's channels. I just want to build people up. I just want to help them. I already got man. I'm getting man. I want you to get yours and then we're going to get it together because we stronger together than we are apart. And the minute that y'all stop dividing yourselves and you stop hating and you stop being so jealous and evil and, and wanting people to fall because you in that dark place, but you got to come out of that dark place and darkness and light can't be in the same place. One of y'all got to flee in order for the other one to be able to exist or you got to, you got to move over to that other side. I'm telling you, bro. I'm telling you, bro. I love it. I love it. I absolutely love this life. We playing Monopoly with real cash. We getting to this money. We trying to figure out where we can put people in positions to be successful. Join the chasers, man. Join the chasers, bro. We love our people. We going to see it through. And every breath in my body until the day that I exhale, is going to be dedicated to making sure that we run this bag up, live the dreams that we want. We're going to do everything that we want, and we can have heaven too. And that's the beautiful part about it. We can do everything. We can have heaven on earth, and we can have it in the afterlife. 100%. I want it all. I want my cake. I want key lime pie. I want strawberry cheesecake. And I want a Twix ice cream bar to go along with it. We're going to get it all. Chasers, we up. Chasers, we up. Link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. Let's get to the show. Yeah.